Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys and for once it's still about uh, you and me as writers who use uh, Macs and iPhones and iPads but it's about saving you money on Macs and iPhones and iPads. Check out the best Apple devices for writers playlist here on the 58 Keys channel for very specific, very strong recommendations about exactly what the best Mac, the best iPhone, the best iPad and more are for you as a Right, very specific, very, very nearly very strong, very nearly very specific, pretty specific, pretty. Anyway, uh, throughout these special episodes, I have actually said repeatedly that being on a budget, as writers are, does not mean buying the cheapest. It can't mean buying the cheapest. It means buying the right one for you, and hopefully the right one that will last. Uh, even if that means you can't buy now, fine. Yeah, we're all on a budget. I just need you to spend yours wisely. I need me to spend mine wisely, possibly a bit more wisely than I have. I just, I believe this, an expensive device that does what you need and does it for years, that is the real bargain. The cheap device that doesn't work and you have to keep replacing, that's just throwing money away. Now, we can't do that, so what we do instead is we budget carefully and we buy wisely. There are ways to get Apple devices for less than the full-on retail price. Actually, I will let me talk in a minute about uh, second-hand things and eBay and that sort of stuff. But let's start with brand new or, or effectively brand new. If actually, that is the place to start. You, you know that you can go straight to Apple, you can buy their new devices, you can pay the full price, yeah. You may not be so aware that you can also buy from Apple for less. Apple has a refurbished store as well as its main real one and it sells things really quietly through it. I mean good luck finding the refurb store if you go through Apple's website. You'll get there but you know they don't encourage you. So let me just tell you the directories. If you're in the UK or the US, go to one of these addresses. You see it's the same address just with UK slashed in the middle. It's the refurb store. Go to that and you will always save money on devices. You'll always pay less. Depending on the device, uh, you can sometimes pay a lot less. Actually, I mean, I just checked before we started talking and I saw $300 off a MacBook Pro. It was a MacBook Pro that retails for $2,000. So 300 off is a considerable saving. Uh, you will also always get a device that is exactly as if you bought it genuinely, totally, completely brand new from Apple. Maybe it was faulty and it came back, but then if that's true, they fixed it. Maybe someone bought two or they didn't like the color and they said it back, who knows? We'll never know, but it would have been returned from somebody who bought it full price. Apple will have refurbished it so that it is exactly perfectly new. So uh, there's a small problem though. If you want, let me say first, it, there's no reason to hesitate over buying from the refurb store. It is genuinely as new, same guarantees, everything. But there's also no opportunity to hesitate in the refurb store. Things come in and they go out. Uh, that is the one thing here. If you see the thing you want, buy it because it will be gone in the refurb store. And um, refurb stock, it changes all the time. Nothing stays for long. So if it is what you want, get it straight away. One thing, it'll come in a plain white box instead of Apple's usual fancy photography. You can you can live with that. Yeah, I think. Uh, one other thing as well, don't expect to find Apple's very, very latest devices in there. It always takes a few months for them to appear, partly because somebody has to buy them and return them and they have to be refurbished. But also, I imagine Apple's not very keen on the idea of sort of undercutting its products the week they come out with cheaper versions of the same thing. Next, if you are a student or a teacher or in any way working in education, you can get a pretty good discount through your educational establishment on all Apple devices. I mean, usually you get a discount. Sometimes you get something extra thrown in like AirPods, occasionally both. Uh, by the way, you can't combine any of these offers. The refurb store does its thing. The student discount is another. But uh, check with your educational establishment for more details. Similarly, though, very similarly, by the way, if you happen to work in a large enough corporation, talk with their uh, IT people or their buying people, whatever they're called in yours, to see if Apple has a discount deal with them, because they very commonly do. 
I can't get that through a corporation. I'm a full-time self-employed writer, but I'm actually also a member of the Writers Guild of Great Britain, and the Writers Guild of Great Britain has one of these deals with Apple. So I and any other member can get a certain amount of discount through buying through the Guild. Also, by the way, you can buy from Apple without paying everything all at once. And this one's harder to describe because simply because the details, they vary so much depending on the device and when you buy and what country you buy in. But in the giant majority of cases, Apple will sell you things in installments. And you know that can mean you pay more, but actually weirdly often with Apple, it doesn't. Not all the time though, so look for it. Uh, two very specific examples. Um, if you're American, if you're in America and you have an Apple card, then you can buy an Apple device through that card and you will get cash back. It's a credit card cash back thing. And it, it's quite considerable when you buy it. But please check this before you buy because I'm in the UK and an Apple card isn't available here. So I haven't been able to use this to try myself. But there have at least been some times when using your Apple card, you could buy an iPhone on installments and get that cash back bit, that percentage return on your credit card immediately, but for the whole price of the iPhone. So that makes for a significant cash flow saving there. Uh, then in the US, here in the UK, and in most other territories around the world, there is a thing called the iPhone upgrade program. And actually, it, it, it's not the same program. It varies in the most absurd, tiny details, but very broadly, if you are eligible, it's a credit check thing, then through this program, you can get an iPhone, the new iPhone, and pay for it monthly instead of an upfront cost. There is some upfront cost, but not the full thing. And then if you keep paying for after 12 months uh, and the new iPhone comes out, you can say, yes, please, I want to swap to that. And you swap over, you've got the new phone, you carry on. You don't have to do that. If you just say, no, stick in with this, you keep paying and after 24 months in total, it's done. You own the phone. If you are someone who likes to upgrade, that someone who needs the new features of the new phone, then it's a, it's a way to avoid some of the constant finding of a big upfront costs each year instead of spreading out the cost, which is the appeal for anybody who wants to keep up with an iPhone. Everything so far, student discounts, corporate discounts, Apple Card, refurb, so it's all been about buying directly from Apple. And of course, you don't have to. You can buy from anywhere else, although probably anywhere else pretty much means Amazon. Amazon does not sell all Apple devices, but whatever it does sell, it will always sell it for less than Apple does. Except there is a catch. When you do buy anything directly from Apple, you have you go through what they call build to order. Uh, you have all these options. You can say, yes, I, I want a 24 inch iMac, but I want it with this much RAM, that much SSD storage, and I would like it in blue, please. Okay, fine. Um, when you buy from Amazon, none of that happens. Amazon will instead, it will list one configuration of Mac or device, whatever it is, with a certain amount of storage this amount uh, of RAM, that color of this, it will list that and no variation. Uh, so if that's what you want, fantastic. You just go straight ahead and buy it. Apple gives you more flexibility, but you kind of pay for that flexibility. I think it's worth it because you get to choose to spend your money on the bits that matter to you, like the color, like the storage, like the RAM. You can make a difference with it. I should say, by the way, uh, yeah, everything I've just said is true. If, if course uh, I wouldn't would I mess around with you would I mess around with your head when I say Amazon lists one configuration it's like it lists one configuration at a time so if you search for iPad it might list 30 different iPads that are all the same but they're different colors or they have different configurations of things so with Amazon you've got to go through searching for things you're not guaranteed to be able to pick what you want you're quite likely to find what you need if you dig around and if you keep checking long enough. I bought a HomePod here in the UK through a service called CEX. Um, details below. I know, I know there must be American equivalents, but I don't know what they are. It, the HomePod arrived in bubble wrap, but, you know, instead of a box, but it's over there. It works really well. I'm very happy and I saved a lot of money along the way. You can also, of course, buy Apple gear through sites like eBay. 
I know you know with eBay you've got to be really careful that what you're going to get is what you think you're going to get and not just a photograph of something um, and you have to worry about the condition and things like that. that that's the same with Apple gear as it is with I don't know buying sun cream or something of it it's just that with Apple gear there's one more thing that you need to be careful about when you're going through an auction site like eBay or anything similar to it uh, it is it says it is startlingly common to find that an Apple device you want is on sale on eBay for more and sometimes far more than it would cost to just go buy it directly from Apple. I mean, why? Uh, do this for me. Wherever you're going to end up buying from, go to Apple first. Check out Apple's own prices first. Work through the builds to order options. Go all the way through it, picking what you need. Whatever you know you need, do it. Look at the options when you don't know what's there. See what the kind of final prices would be. And then pop off to Amazon, to eBay or to anywhere else you can think of and see what the prices are like. That's it for this whole week of 58 key specials about buying the best Apple device remember, for writers. Remember, they're all in the playlist. I'm conscious that the one thing I haven't talked about in the entire run is uh, about why you would buy Apple gear. I just, I figure you're a writer who uses this stuff as well. So, you know, don't you? If you're showing this uh, 58 Key series to someone else who doesn't use Apple gear yet, well, well, you know, you tell them, okay? You talk them into it, okay? Persuade them. We're right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you too to the UK's Arts Council for all their help uh, over these months with these special editions of 58 Keys. I'm so grateful to what they've helped me do and evolve the series into. It's great. I get to talk to you more because of them. So thank you, UK's Arts Council. But mostly, thank you for watching this. Um, I can see from your eyes you're not doing quite enough writing. Is this a mirror I'm looking at or a lens? Um, let's both of us do this. Let's take care of ourselves. Let's write more and let's see each other soon, okay?